بسم الله والصلاة والسلام على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم من البعض. So as we spoke about the jasa, those things that are some of the things that are impure, we need to talk about something very very important that is how to purify the jasa, how to clean something that is najis. Okay. So impurities in, in general in the Sharia in Islam. That impurities, najasat, rashad, please pay attention. Come, come sit here so you can hear better. Impurities are removed in general by water. So what, how do we imp uh, remove impurities? With what? With what? A louder? With water. With water, barakah feet. And uh, we use, also to remove the stain of impurities and stuff, we use water, um, and, and so forth. There's also other methodologies or, or other ways to uh, remove impurities and we'll talk about some of them. So one of the first things is if we need to purify our clothing from the urine of a child that is breastfeeding. So a baby that only drinks milk, actually not just a baby, but a male baby that only drinks milk, uh, the way you purify that, so for example, if you're holding a baby, it's a cute little baby, oh, mashallah, and it only drinks milk. It doesn't eat any food, nothing. Only milk from its mother or, or just milk. If it does number one on your clothes, and it's a boy, you can sprinkle it with water to remove, remove the najasa. You can use just some water just to get it off. You, you don't have to wash it totally. If it's a girl, you have to wash it totally. That's an uh, Islamic rule, and that's in accordance with the Prophet Sallallahu statement, يَغْسُلُ مِنْ بَوْلَ الْجَارِيَ وَيُرُشُّ مِنْ بَوْلَ الْغُلَامِ The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi said, it is only the urine of a female infant which must be washed, I mean totally washed, the urine of a male infant should be sprinkled over with water. Should be sprinkled. So, if it's a boy that is a baby that only drinks milk, you can sprinkle it with water to get the najasa. If it's a girl, her, they say because her urine is maybe stronger or something, then it needs to be washed totally. And this is the hukum in accordance with the nuts from the Prophet and what the Prophet said. So that was the first thing. The second thing is if there is najasa on the ground, if there's najasa in your room, for example, someone does bobo, someone does a little bit of ear, maybe Rashad was, couldn't get to the bathroom in time. Alhamdulillah, the and there's, 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 there's uh, number one on the floor. How should we clean that? What should we do? We clean it with water. We clean it with water. Good. And this is in accordance with the hadith of Anas ibn Malik anhu, is that there was a Bedouin, or there's a, a couple of uh, rawaya on this hadith, that the Prophet wasallam was in the masjid with his companions, and a man, an old Bedouin, meaning a desert Arab. He came in the masjid, in the Prophet Sallallahu masjid. And he urinated in the masjid. SubhanAllah. The old man came, came in the masjid center, and he just urinated there. He peed in the masjid, on the floor. And the Prophet Sallallahu and, and then the Sahaba the, and the people praying, they became very upset. They wanted to hurt this man. You just peed in the masjid. You just came and stood up, come Arabi, for bolo to the masjid. Fazakir al-Nas. So the people were upset. They wanted to get this guy. For da'awun Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, don't do anything to him. But instead, bring me a bucket, let him finish, and bring me a bucket of water or a container of water. And they poured it on the, the urine to clean it. So that shows us if we have urine or najasa on the ground, 
that we purify it with water. Now, if it is number two, and if it's a lot or something, we can remove the most of it, because the intention here is you want to get rid of the najasa. It's not just that you use water, but it's that you want to remove all the uh, aspects of the najasa. So if it is something and it's big and it's nasty, or we come, we want to pray, and there's a dead rat there, and his body is decaying or whatever, he's dead. We should remove the rat and, 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 and use some water to, to rinse the area. Okay? So you want to make sure that area is clean for prayer. So that's how we get rid of Najasa on the ground. Um, another thing, if we want to purify our clothing, if we want to purify our clothing that has blood or uh, uh, the blood when the women have the blood, if we need to purify our, our, the clothing, then she should, um, if it's dry on there, if it's dry, then scrape it off and sprinkle water on it. If it's a lot and it's fresh or what have you, and it's still wet, then use water to, to wash it out. Okay, so you should wash that area that has the uh, blood or what have you on the garment. And the Prophet said in this regard, if the dress of any, uh, of any of you is soiled by menstrual blood, she should scrape it, like this, then she should sprinkle it with water, then she, she, then she should pray in it. Okay? And also the Prophet and this is the evidence in the Hadith of, of Khola, she said, O Messenger of Allah, what if the blood doesn't go? Meaning if there's still a little bit of blood left, she said, what if there's just a little bit of blood still on the clothing? The Prophet said, The Prophet said, Water will suffice you, and the stain will not harm you. Meaning if there's just a little bit left, it's not going to hurt. It doesn't hurt you. It's fine. You can pray in it. So if there's a little bit of something impure that you've tried to get it off, especially with blood, and also the fluids of the adults and things like this, then this is the same hukum. It's the same ruling that use a little water if you can't get it out, then you can, and if it's dry, you can just scrape it or rub it like this and try to sprinkle it with water. And if there's a little bit left, I mean it's a stain. It's not still dried stuff and, and stuff, but it's a little stained, you can pray it. Okay? And also, how does the women, how do the women, they pray, I mean, do they purify the, the bottom of their garment? So if, for example, a woman, her garment, you know, a lot of times women, especially if they're wearing proper hijab, their hijab is probably long, and it's on the ground. So when they're walking, sometimes they might walk in something that might be nudges. They might get some najasa or some other filth on their garment that they don't know about. But just the fact that they're walking and they're walking around on the dirt, the dry dirt and things like this, that purifies the garment. That's enough. That's sufficient. Unless you see something that is purely on the garment, then you should clean it off. But in general, for that which you don't know, uh, and it's there, then the dirt will purify it. Because the Prophet ﷺ said, يُطَحِرُهُ مَا بَعْهُ He said, that which follows it purifies it. Meaning, the woman who's walking and her garment is dragging on the dirt, that which follows the impurity, because her, her garment might have gotten some nudges, the dirt after that purifies her garment. Okay, so that'll get her garment clean. Also, uh, if there is what is called uh, uh, medhi, which is also when you get older from the men mainly from the men, and so forth. This is a type of fluid and so forth that has to be cleaned off, and it's also the similar, that we use water. We use water to clean off anything impure. This is in general. Also, if you, uh, during the time of the Prophet ﷺ, there was no carpet in the masjid. Was there carpet in the masjid during the time of the Prophet ﷺ? 
There was? Why do you say yes? You're not even listening. Please listen. No. Uh, no. So in the time of the Prophet there was no carpet. The Prophet's messenger. One day I'm going to take you guys there and you'll see how nice and beautiful marble and tile and gold on the doors and very beautiful now. And it's, I think, I'm not sure, maybe a million people can pray in there. And mashallah, it's very beautiful and there's nice carpets in there. And but in the, during the time of the prophet, it wasn't like that. It was very humble, very simple. It was open. Dogs even used to run in the masjid back in those days. Because there was no walls. During that time, during the prophet, the, 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 there was no walls. So the wind and the elements, the rain would come in the masjid. The wind, the sun would dry in the masjid, dry the, you know... And people used to pray in their shoes. The Prophet ﷺ, you know, it's permissible to pray in your sandals or your shoes. And that was the case during the time of the Prophet ﷺ. So now, people don't usually do that. Most people, most places, most besides it, almost everywhere, they don't pray in their shoes. The only place I know is in a place in Yemen, in a place in a village where Shaykh Allah, Shaykh Mukhul bin Hadi al-Wadi'i, Allah yarhamahu, in his camp, in the place where he has his marqas of sunnah, dar al-hadith, that that masjid, they allow the people to pray in their shoes. So if there is najata on your shoes, what should you do? This is what the Prophet sallallahu said. This is based on the hadith of Abi Sayyid al-Khudri, radiallahu ta'ala, who stated that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, so the Prophet said, If any one of you goes to the masjid, he should turn his shoes over and examine them. So you should take your shoes off if you're going to pray in a masjid or you're going to pray somewhere where you don't have to take your shoes off. Maybe it's feed and maybe you're in a big field and you don't necessarily need to pray. You don't ne- you know, sometimes you pray in situations you don't have to take your shoes off. So you, t- you should, if you're going to pray in that area, you should take your shoe off, look at it, examine them, and if he sees filth on it, you see najasa, poo, anything that is najas, he should wipe them on the ground, then he should pray in them. That's what the Prophet ﷺ said. So, we know, if there's najasa on your shoe or your sandal, then scrape it on the ground, in the dirt, and that will purify it. No. Uh-huh. No, you're not going to see the Prophet ﷺ. But his grave, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, the, the grave of the Prophet, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, is in a place, it's, it's behind walls, which is not considered a part of the masjid. Are you listening? Listen. You will not see, you will see maybe that you can walk by the area and look where the walls are where the Prophet, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, is buried. Okay, but you will not be able to see exactly that because it's not considered part of the masjid. They they built the masjid around that area. It was not initially a part of the masjid like that. Okay, so you cannot pray to the Prophet wasallam. You cannot ask him for du'a, and you cannot uh, you you can go and you give him salams, and that's sufficient. Okay, so that's how we purify the bottom of our shoes. Also, the last thing I want to mention, or the last two things, we just mentioned already that if you have a, a cup or something and a dog licks it, how do we purify it? You remember? You wash it with dirt. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Mumtaz, Good. So you first clean it with dirt. First, if there's liquid or something, you pour it out, you throw the food out, then you clean it with dirt once and wash it seven times with water. And 
the last thing as far as purifying uh, the skin of dead animals. You can purify dead animal skins by tanning them, meaning that you there's a certain kind of treatment and they put it out in the sun and let the skin dry. That is the purification of it. And the Prophet said, uh, uh, Ibn Abbas said that he, he heard the Messenger of Allah saying, إِذَا دُبِغَ الْإِحَابَ فَقَدْ تَحْرَى He said, when a skin has been tanned, it is purified. So, that is how we, those are some of the things and how we purify. One other thing that's very important that I have to mention is that also that what is called istijma. Istijma. Istijma is when we have three stones that if you don't have any water, you can use stones. So sometimes if you go on hiking or you're out in the desert or something, you might not have toilet paper, you might not have any water. Maybe you don't have enough water to clean yourself. So you can make istijma. Istijma is when you take three stones. It has to be at least three, and you should all and it should always be with her. It should always be an odd number. You can take three stones, not less, not one, not two, but at least three. And you take the three stones and you use that to clean yourself if you don't have any water or anything. Okay? So, for example, what if you have to go uh, number one and you're, you're out and we're out and we don't have a bathroom around? What are you going to do? Uh huh. And you clean yourself with the rocks on your private parts. That's what you have to do. So when you urinate, after you use your bathroom, you clean the area where your your urine comes out of. You clean that with the rocks until there's no more uh, uh, no more najasa coming out. Okay. And the same thing with number two. The same thing with number two. You use the three rocks. And the Prophet wasallam had mentioned that uh, in a hadith that he said that if you uh, if you make a stijmar with the rocks then do it with an odd number okay so you use that to purify yourself and clean yourself so there's many different ways we clean ourselves we can use water we also use rocks if we uh, you can use rocks with water if you have water and rocks that's okay and those scholars they say you can use other things Besides the rocks, in, in the place of the istijmal, that's why many people, that's why they use the toilet paper. They use the toilet paper like istijmal. So they say, the scholars say the best is to use both. To use water and use maybe tissue or something. So when you make tissue, you should use three pieces at least. And it should be an odd number. Not just one tissue when you dry yourself. But you should use three, or if it has three sides, you can use three sides. Okay? But you, you should use an odd number. Even if you have to tear your tissue into little pieces to make it three, then that's fine. But make sure it's an odd number. Three, or five, or seven, or nine, until the najasa is ended. And I ask Allah the, the Almighty to accept our good and forgive our evil. وصلى الله وسلم على نبينا محمد وعلى اله وصحبه وسلم